Hi, my name is Jamie Barks, um, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own state map art. Um, these are really popular. I've seen lots of different versions of them floating around on um, Etsy and Pinterest, and I kind of was thinking about it, and I wanted to come up with a way to do it um, so that I could kind of give it to my husband as a gift, and I just thought it would be really fun to share with you guys. It makes a great little gift for Mother's Day coming up. Really simple, definitely something you could involve your children with if you have them. So I'm gonna walk you through the process and the supplies that you need uh, to get ready. First, you're gonna need watercolor paper. This is actually the really um, pretty inexpensive student grade paper. I love a higher grade paper for some other stuff, but for this, the inexpensive stuff works great. Um, if you click on the link below, it'll take you to my blog and you can find a little more information about the different processes and what I did. And I'll kind of go over the supplies a little more in depth, but I'm just gonna kind of over cover what you need. So once you have your paper, you need to um, have watercolors. And there's a couple different options you can use. You can get watercolor tubes. Those work great if you happen to have those on hand. Um, I'm gonna use my Koi Pocket Field sketch box. I love this. They have great colors, really wonderful. I've been using this for years. Great if you're interested in sketching. Really, really awesome. But it's a little expensive. You definitely do not need to buy this for this project. Um, you can actually get away with the little Crayola watercolors. I think these kind of get discredited, but they're actually a really great little supply. Um, these are actually my son's, but I use his sometimes when I'm painting just for fun. They kind of have a little bit different feel, but the colors are really vivid. Um, and then the big, the main thing that you're gonna need to pick up is a frisket. You can get this at any arts or crafts store. It's a little expensive, but if you wait, most you know, main stores do like a 40 or 50% off coupon. That's what I always used to buy mine. So um, you're gonna need to get this. And what this is, it's a latex resist, and it's what allows you to get the white state in the center. So really important, and we'll kind of go over that a little bit more when we actually start applying it. Um, you will need to have a little piece of uh, rubber or eraser to pull it up. This actually came in a kit that I bought um, with the frisket. Uh, this stuff, I love this, it's really great. It also came with a little uh, nib, I think is what it was called. It's like a little chopstick you can use to sort of push it around. I just use an old paintbrush. It will destroy your paintbrush, so make sure you um, use a paintbrush that you don't care about. This one got left in Mod Podge, so it was already hard and kind of stiff, so it actually does a really, really good job. It'll kind of make a little more sense when we go through the process. Um, you're also going to need masking tape, and you're gonna need a work surface either a piece of cardboard or I use old canvas boards or a, a large clipboard or something to put your watercolor paper on to work with. And I'll kind of explain that a little bit more when we actually tape it down here in a second. Um, so that's all the supplies that you need. Well, obviously some paint brushes um, to apply your paint. But other than that, that's all that you need. And like I said, you can get a little more information about that on the link below. The first thing that you're gonna need to do is to actually get your state map traced onto your paper. And I'm gonna tell you how I do it with a disclaimer that when my husband watches this video, he's gonna be really annoyed. Um, I go to my computer and I do a web image search. I find the state outline and I just kind of scale it on the computer to the size that I want. And I turn off the lights, hold my paper up to the monitor and trace it. Um, obviously, this could damage your computer, so I'm not gonna recommend that. You can also do it using a carbon paper transfer. You know, you can make your own carbon paper. I'll explain that a little more in depth on the link below on my website, the technical way to do it, but that's how I do it because I tend to like to cut corners and do it easy. But like I said, if you damage your monitor, I am not liable. So once you have it on your paper and you have your state map part, you need to secure your paper down. So you're gonna get your masking tape. You can buy artist tape and they sell it in all your art supplies store, art supply stores, but it's pretty expensive. So I actually, one day I ran out and I decided to use masking tape and I do a little trick. Like I said, I'm sure this is not original to me, but I take it and blot it on my clothes and that kind of makes it a little less tacky because if it's too sticky, it will pull your paper up when you pull it up and that will make you cry. So what you're gonna do is actually just tape down the edges. Um, I just eyeball it at about a quarter of an inch if you're a very precise person, you can make little quarter inch marks. I'm not, so I just wing it. It's really important that you tape this down. As we go through the process, you'll kind of understand a little bit more, but with some of the mediums that we're using and with the watercolor application, a lot of, paper, a lot of water gets on the paper and it tends to bow and buckle and you really need to have it secure. Okay, once you have it taped down, then it'll be time to apply your frisket. This is basically straight latex and it's super awesome because when you put it down, it 
creates a mask and you can paint over it and then you can pull it up and you'll have this lovely white surface under it. Um, I use it a lot. I really love it. I use it a lot in my coffee art and different stuff. Um, usually I'm doing very small areas of it. So this is a little different because it's a large area. You can see it has a bubble in it. Um, I should tell you to pour it into a palette or a plate. I use it out of the bottle. It dries really quick and when you pour it out, it tends to get tacky too fast for me. Um, but I do like to keep the lid handy so I can cover it up if I need to take a few minutes to work it in. So we're just gonna start putting it on the, on the actual um, state. And it's really important that you push it all the way to the edge and that you cover the pencil lines. Um, it kind of acts like an eraser, so when you pull it up, it'll take up the pencil lines, which is great because you don't want those there. So just kind of work it around. Like you said, it's very fluid and you're sort of, it's not really even painting, it's more like pushing it around. And the one thing about this you really have to watch is it's very, um, dries very quick. And once it starts to set up at all, you can't touch it, it'll start pulling up. I'll show you here in a second because that kind of might not make sense. So you have to work when it's really wet. Once it's set up a little bit, you can add more to it. But when it's, once it starts drying, it gets really sticky. But it's pretty easy to work with. Uh, normally you're putting it on, I do it on lines, like on flowers or vines, just little small pieces of your canvas that or uh, paper that you want to be white or a different color. Um, but with this, you actually want to make sure that you get a really heavy coat because you don't want to risk getting white in the middle, I mean, getting color in the middle of your state. So I'm just kind of moving it down, catching all the lines. Making sure I get all the little edges. I'm trying to see if it's, it's still not held up, set enough for me to show you what I mean about it pulling up, but I promise it does it, it pulls it up. Like I said, this is kind of expensive. There you go, you kind of see the little strings happening there. That's once it starts to set up, it'll pull against you. So if it starts to set up too quick before you get a chance, if it starts, it's hard to see, but it's kind of pulling little peels, then just leave it and come back to it in a few minutes when it's totally set up. It's kind of the in-between that you have to watch out for. It's a little tricky. Um, it's a, this is a great, you can use it with acrylic paints, with watercolors, you can use it in layers. It's, it's super fun. Um, I love it. I guess I do paint with coffee a lot and it's really great to use for that because it gives you a little more depth and dimension because you can do some really cool effects with it. Super fun. And then it's up to you, but I'm putting a little heart cut out on my map. Um, I actually did series of four of these for myself <laughs> and they're actually the four different places that my husband and I have lived together and so this is a little heart over Titusville where my family lives in Florida and each state represents where we lived so it's a really fun little project It'd be cute for Mother's Day or to do as a gift it would be great to do as children um, and you'll see when we get to the actual watercolor process it's super fun and laid back and just a great little project. There you go, see it's pulling a little. So I might need to let that set and come back up there in a minute. You kind of can see what I mean, like you could use really anything to apply the frisket, it just, because you're just pushing it around really. Once you get your frisket done, um, you're gonna need to let it dry for several hours. I usually let mine dry overnight just to be safe. Um, because it's such a large amount of it, it takes a little while for it to really, really set up and you need to make sure it's super dry before you start putting paint on it. Also, um, I always kinda like to check it a couple of hours out to make sure that I didn't accidentally miss a spot because it's white when you're putting it on, it can be a little hard. And I've noticed before little dimples or areas that I've missed. And once it's set up, you can come back over it and put a little more on it just to make sure that you have good coverage. So once you get that done and it's dry, here comes the really fun part, you get to apply paint. So um, for this, this is a super simple technique. I like to work in threes. I think that's a good number of colors for this. You can really do whatever makes you happy, but I like to kind of stick with threes. So, and you can need to do complementary colors, kind of stick within a cool palette. And for Georgia, because I think of Pine Mountains, I'm gonna work with greens. 
So you just need to make your um, watercolor really wet, like you want a super soupy paint. Like I said, you can use tubes of paint on a palette or a paper plate, or you can use the little kitty Crayola ones. Just make sure if you're gonna use um, one of these, you can actually do them in the little circles and just put lots of water in there and you'd be fine. So I'm just gonna do a really bright green. Really any brush will work. I love this large filbert, but you can pretty much work with anything. I'm actually, I know I said three, I'm sticking with three. I'm gonna use this little olive color. I think that might add a little more, it's a little more of a contrast than the other two colors. So like I said, really want it really wet. And this is almost impossible to mess up. So the first thing you're gonna do, I like to start with adding some drips of color. So I'm just literally letting it pour down the canvas. This is really, really not technical, very laid back. So I said it'd be super fun to do with kids. I made the mistake, I'm gonna splatter some paint in a minute, of teaching my toddler to splatter paint. You really should not probably teach a four-year-old that, an eight-year-old maybe, but we've had some paint splattering catastrophes in our house. So I'm just kind of running it down a little bit. Just kind of starting to get a little color on the paper. Okay, I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of, you can see I can go right over the, the state and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little kind of wash it in a little so I'm getting the only thing you kind of have to watch out for on this is to make sure that you fill your heart in if you decided to have a heart and that you actually um, get around the state pretty well uh, you want to make sure you kind of make there's paint all around the edges so you have a good crisp line when that brings up so I got that I'm gonna do a little this is my favorite this is what my three-year-old loves to do <laughs> this is almost impossible to mess up. The only thing, if you notice that you're getting a lot of um, bleed, you can see where this is kind of bleeding a little bit. It's because the paper is so wet, so you might just want to let it set for a second, a couple minutes, and come back uh, watercolor, or you can blot some of the water off. Watercolor paper dries super fast, usually. Water. See, I'm getting a little red now. I like to shake it. You can also blow it and get a weird effect. Like I said, this is just kind of very laid back. Make it up as you go. Um, really fun way to paint. to grab a paper towel and pull a little bit of the water up and then apply some more paint. So if you start noticing a lot of water on there, you can kind of pull, I've already kind of got some of it up. You don't really have to mess with the state. That you can kind of see where it's pulling up on the latex. It's, it's really cool. So I kind of blotted some of the water up and I'm just gonna add a few more little runs here. Because I want to. <laughs> Let it go all the way down there so you get some nice strips. You can do this lots of different ways. Um, I just like the look of the watercolor splattered and the, the paint, but you could do it with latex, uh, uh, acrylic paint over the latex, it would be fine. So if you wanted to do stripes or a pattern or polka dots or just splatter, latex paint, gives, I mean, uh, acrylic paint gives you a really different look. Um, you could definitely kind of play around and do different techniques if you wanted to. So you just kind of tweak it. Like I said, the only thing you have to watch, and I'm just double checking my edges to make sure that I've got my state, I've got color up to the edge of all the parts of the state. And that looks really good. And my little, I'm gonna make sure my heart, I'll put some of this army green in there. And that's pretty much it. You can, like I said, you can play around as much as you wanted. You could add words in here. You could add all kinds of stuff. If you were into stamping, you could use stamps or stencils or you could get as elaborate with this as you wanted. This stuff is really great, really good with watercolor, really good with acrylic. 
But once you get this done, then you're gonna need to let it dry again for several hours. And this is really important. If the paper is at all damp or wet, when you try to pull this up, it will pull your paper up with it and make a huge mess. I know from experience, so um, usually I just set it aside and I kind of let it hang out overnight because the most exciting part is pulling it up and getting to see the finished product. This is actually one that I already have, um, that I already have finished and it's been drying for several hours and I'm actually gonna show you how to pull this up really easy and fun. And so you use, um, you can use an eraser, I have used a really hard eraser before, um, but I love this little rubber block. It's almost like a tennis shoe sole or a flip flop sole, but you literally just start in the corner and you just peel it up. It's very cathartic. Get a good piece, sometimes you can kinda roll it. Just kind of using it as an eraser as a little pencil line, it didn't come up. Usually it pretty much pulls up all your pencil lines. This is the most exciting part because you can see it starting to take shape and you have that nice white crisp underneath, it's leaving a few pencil lines there. Um, it rarely ever comes up like that in one big sheet. <laughs> it's very strange. We're actually Probably should not let it come up on big sheet because it did put my paper a tiny bit in the center, but it's not very noticeable. Because for most projects, I just use this in really small areas, but it's really, right. Yeah, I'm gonna be careful if you pull it out like that. I got a little bit of my paper there, but usually I, it doesn't come up with a big peel like that. I'm using this to get the rest of my lines too. It didn't pull up the pencil like it normally did either, but it's not a big deal because you can just come back in. You actually use this little rubber as an eraser. And so you get this really cool edge of the state. And see, I told you to be really careful and watch the heart, <laughs> and I didn't, and you can see that my heart didn't quite get covered all the way, but that's a quick fix. I'm gonna grab a little paint real quick. This board, I this is an old canvas board that I use for watercolor that I love, and I actually um, use it for my coffee art, so it's kind of really messy and it smells like coffee, which is kind of nice though, because I like coffee a lot. Once you get all your tape up, and you wanna be really careful pulling your tape up because it stinks to rip something at the end, I know. So here you go. Once you're done, you have your little state art. Uh, this is South Carolina, where my husband and I lived when we were first married, and so there you go. All finished, cute. Like I said, I did a series, so I did all four places that we live, and I'm gonna frame those. If you have any questions about the process or the technique, or you just want to get to know a little bit more about me and my work, you can visit my personal uh, blog at barksblog.com, and you can find a little more information on this in the description. There'll be a link back to a post that details more of the supplies and stuff that I used. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you have any questions or suggestions, that would be great. Thanks so much for watching.